hello, 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 everybody. And I had the unsighted the thing on the brain. Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to some more runes. We'll start off this episode by talking about a weird encounter that I had today. Uh, a few weeks ago, I posted in a roleplay Discord that I'm in uh, that it could be a fun idea to have just a fun, cute, hey, what if we roleplay and our characters are like single mothers, like like the game by Dream Daddy that came out how many years ago now? I don't even know. Except our characters are moms instead. That could be, you know, cute. That could be fun. Today, like probably a good two weeks later, I get a message on it. It's like, oh, hey, are you still interested in this? I have some questions I'd like to ask you. So it's like, okay, yeah, sure, fine, whatever, ask away. Like, it was just, you know, a random semi-intrusive thought a while back. But you know what? If someone wants to do it, let's probably do it. Whatever. Um, so basically, they asked, uh, oh, can we both play as female characters for this? And it's like, I mean, that's, like, the idea. <laughs> and then they ask, oh... <laughs> Does my character have to be a mother, or can she just be like a motherly type? And it's like, you literally went on to the, a post about playing as, like, having a roleplay where we play as moms. And decide to ask, oh, but like, do we have to? It's like... Yeah, that's a bit weird. Yeah, but it's like, but if I have my character play as a mom, then I'd have to, like, make, like, the children characters. I'd have to make whole new characters for this. I'm like, yes, like, if you... <laughs> like, if it was just the case, that, like, that server doesn't exactly have a lot of, uh, let's, let's say lesbian, uh, roleplay options available. Like, you can look and look and look and look. And basically everyone either wants to do guy on guy or guy on girl. It's very rare to find someone who actually wants to <laughs> role play like two women together. And when they do, it's usually a person is like, yes, I never do anything less than five paragraphs in every single one of my posts. I actually role played with someone like that once. It was absolutely terrible. For the record, uh, viewers, I understand the game doesn't have any audio. I think it's better that way. <laughs> For your sake. Also, yeah, I didn't notice it before I started recording, and now it's too late to want to change it. Anyway. Because, <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, my method of roleplay is basically, like, book style. Like, as if you're reading a book, so it's some people do, like, first person, I do, you know, third person, because it reads better. Instead of, oh, yes, I woke up and rubbed my eyes, it's like, you know, Lee woke up and rubbed their eyes. Kind of, you know, like a book. Yeah. This person. So, basically, the scene was, uh, our characters are, like, sisters. Uh, we wake up in the same bedroom together because we share a bedroom, whatever. And the one character, I don't even really remember, their character was stressed about like a thing that was coming up. And it's like, I understand that your character is like stressed about, I don't know, a test or whatever it was coming up. Um, You don't have to say that two or three times in every post you make. <laughs> Delilah, nervous about the test, looks at her sister. But what about the test? She asks nervously. <laughs> her eyes darting around the room nervously as she thinks about her test. Yeah, that's a little bit excessive. And it's like, I can't go back to the actual like post that they made and actually like read what it was verbatim because they deleted all of their posts because apparently 
they were using, I don't know what the ter term is, like bit code or whatever it is. They're using some sort of coding, whatever, to stylize it and make it all look pretty for all of their posts instead of just text. It was like a pink box and like text was inside it, whatever. And it's like, it's a lot of extra fluff just to contain your words. And also make it look like you're writing more than you really are because instead of like screen width, you have like half a screen's width. So it's twice as long as what it should be. <laughs> uh, but yeah, apparently it was like copyright or something. So they deleted all of their posts because they used someone else's art or bit code or whatever it was. I don't know. But yeah, every single one of their posts, like basically repeated for verbatim the same exact uh, three paragraphs. And then the last paragraph was like the stuff that their character actually does. <laughs> so instead of having a post be all like, Delilah sits up in bed, rubbing her eye with her left hand while the other hand rests on the bed. So, oh, what time is it? She asks her sister, look, looking at the room and trying to find the clock on the wall uh, in her hazy state, whatever. It would be like three paragraphs of her being uh, nervous about this test or whatever, and then have that at the end. So it's like, okay, like, like literally just cut and paste. And then she got mad at me for not cut and pasting and just writing the same three junk paragraphs over and over. And when I pointed it out to her, she's like, uh, no, I don't. And then immediately like just stopped responding. So yeah, well, that's what you think. And then just never responded again. Like, if there's anyone in the comments who does that style of like text-based role play where they insist on having multiple paragraphs, um, please explain to me how you can keep, like, dialogue good. How do you make dialogue good if every line of dialogue has to be four paragraphs of stuff? Because I haven't the foggiest. <laughs> yeah. Like... Sure, oh, describe, like, the actions that the character is doing. It's like, okay, you've been describing the actions. Like, I don't know what kind of a cartoon you think this is where a person does three paragraphs worth of actions every time they say a line. Or if you think that I'm so insanely forgetful that so you have to say, you know, Delilah, nervous about her test with... uh you know, with her golden locks and ocean blue eyes, uh, freckled face, like, <laughs> we have to describe everything in every post because apparently I'm so forgetful that I'm going to forget the things that you said in your last 20 posts. Character nervous about the test? Sure, whatever. You can say it once in the scene. Heck, you could bring it up maybe two or three times in the scene. You don't have to bring it up five times per post. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have I have tried to, like, match their energy. And, like, for all the different people that I've met with who insist on doing multiple paragraphs per post, I have tried to match their energy. And legitimately, every single time, it's uh, three pair, like multiple paragraphs of garbage. Either repetition or stuff that doesn't matter. And then, oh, here's the actual action and what the character says. Like, maybe they'll go on a tirade about a bird, little sparrow flying through the background. That's real never it's never actually important to the scene. They just want to fill up the extra paragraphs to say, Yep, I wrote ten paragraphs for my post. Cool, it took you three days to, uh just to post uh my character crosses her arms and tuts. Do you really think that's a good idea? she says condescendingly. 
Congratulations for spreading that out into ten paragraphs. Jesus. Unfortunately, it's been three days, so now I have no more interest in continuing this scene with you. Because I'm off doing something else. I spend more time, like, complaining about role players than actually like, doing it. And frankly, I should just go back to just plain writing on my own instead of having to deal with other people. I just tend to get bored of just plain writing on my own. <laughs> That's why I often, you know, write, st yeah, write stories based off of other stories, like that Frosthaven story, or all of that, all of that uh, Magic the Gathering, all those Magic the Gathering stories that I write. Ow. Well, that run sucked. That is unfortunate. But a lot of people, it seems like specifically in this one particular Discord, but just in general from what I've seen, a lot of people want to go play, oh, you play as this canon character from the show, book, movie, whatever that I have a crush on, I'll play as my OC. Uh, yeah, you just be this canon character for me and help me write this uh, one-sided fanfic. No, but you have to play them like you have to play them with the head cannons that I want them to have. You. It's like, okay, you have to play as Husk, but you actually have to be, like, warm and welcoming to my random OC who shows up and starts causing trouble. Uh, no, 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 you, you can't be sarcastic. You have to be warm and welcoming to... It's like, you have to play this character how I want you to. It's like, well, why not just play as someone totally different? No, because I like that character, so I want you to play them for me. And it just reminds me of, like, being a kid and, like, playing pretend with your friends. Like, no... Or, like, you know, playing games, whatever, with friends. Like, no, no, you have to be the, like... I was gonna say, you have to be the healer. That's more of a D and d or a MMORPG thing, so not so much kids, but... You know, like... You have no, to be no. the bad guy. Yeah. I shot you. You're dead now. Oh, you shot... No, no, you didn't shoot me. You missed me. You You didn't shoot me. Oh, uh, no, no, I, I have bulletproof shield. Or I'm immune to bullets. I still remember being in, like, sixth grade. If that part's blurry. I think it was, like, I remember being in, like, sixth grade or something. Playing with, like, a group of kids. Like, oh, what you doing? It's like, okay, so take, like, any character from, like, any game or movie or whatever. And you can, like, mix them with, like, whatever other characters you want. And, like, you're just that character. There's no rules. Everyone was just, like... Running up, basically running around in circles, bumping into each other. Some of them were like play fighting, as like pretending to have swords and stuff. And it's like, hey, you know what? That's fun enough. Whatever. <laughs> Almost got in trouble once because I accidentally pushed over another kid, but we both like had our arms out as if we were like holding shields and we were, like bumping against each other. It wasn't just me bumping against him. We were both bumping against each other. He falls down onto his back. And it's like, oh my god. Like, you know, whatever. Cries out and stuff. Teacher's immediately there. It's like, oh, what happened? It's like, okay, how do I explain that I'm not just being a bully in a way that this teacher will actually believe me? Like, we were pushing each other. He fell down. I didn't get, like, in trouble. For it or anything. So I think the teacher uh, was okay with 
that explanation. But yeah, stories, writing stories and stuff. Writing is fun, theoretically speaking. It can be, yes. Yeah, theoretically speaking. Yeah, I wrote a little uh, backstory thing for my D and D character recently. Oh gosh, right, the D and D game that I'm in. Um, so my character, so my character appears to the group to be basically a ghost with a big old sword, <laughs> a ghost of an elven adventurer, still like you know trapped to roam the planet. Uh, seeking a way to, uh, you know, return to the land of the living. In essence. Has magic, uses sword, all that good and fun stuff. But, of course, the character is actually the sword, who instead just has a projection of the elven adventurer who used to wield the sword, so people don't try to just go, oh, hey, a magic... A magic talking sword, I'll take it. I'll put it in an anti magic field and then stuff it in my anti magic bag of holding, whatever, and I'll just take it home and never let it escape. Let's fight wars of the magic talking sword. Um, the important thing is that the sword is like the actual character. Uh, during. During the last session, we had an encounter with a couple of monsters, and so in particular, the DM rolled for a, a breath attack, a frost, like a cold-based breath attack, and rolled an 18 for damage. And then had, like, whispered to me that my character takes 11 damage, which should not be correct. Uh, and, like, the DM had actually asked me about how cold interacts with objects, and I sent him a screenshot of how el different elements work towards uh, objects. In particular, uh, cold damage is divided by four, and then you subtract the item's hardness. Because if you really think about it, objects don't tend to take a lot of damage from the cold, but they can still take some damage. Yes. Like, we're Canadian. It gets down to, like, minus 60, and houses are still standing. <laughs> uh, so, really, the 18 divided by 4 would be either 4 or 5, depending on how you round. And the hardness is 16. <laughs> so the DM would have to roll more than this. If a roll of 64 or below would deal zero damage to me. Okay. Uh, but instead, roll of 18 dealt 11 damage to me, and he said that was after the math. So apparently that 18 was not the actual damage roll, and the real damage roll was like, a hundred and four. <laughs> hundred and eight? You know, the real damage roll was actually over a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, huh, yeah. And I had gone attacked a few more times. Like, you can see, like, the damage rolls. It's like, oh yeah, it's an eight. Oh yeah, that, that, that does do eight damage. She's like, no, it's supposed to do nothing because harness is damage reduction. It's not AC. I don't care if it's crit. I'm an object. I can't be crit. What's the non-crit damage? Subtract 16. That's the amount I'm supposed to take. I'm supposed to basically not take damage. But I have a low health pool in case something really big comes through. But basically every time I got hit, I took like 10 plus damage. So I'm down to basically just a sliver of my health left. And the DM's like, oh, okay, I'll just have the DM PC cast a make hole on you, and that will restore you to full hit points. And, like, I'm trying to tell the DM, make hole doesn't work here. 
Like, he had messaged me the description of the spells. Like, yeah, see? It says it completely restores all damage done to objects. The very last line says it does not work on creatures. No, not even constructs. Oh my God. It, it really sounds like you have a DM who doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's like, and I had told him, so it's like, no, that won't work on me. The last line says it doesn't work on creatures. So it flat out doesn't. <laughs> and then it's like, oh no, it's fine. And like, after the game, I messaged him about it again. Cause like, oh, maybe he's just distracted. Cause he's trying to keep, you know, all this stuff active at once. He didn't get back to me on that. <laughs> But yeah, from what I've experienced and from what I've heard from the other players, it feels like a DM who, um, I want to say, is in over his head a little bit. I don't want to say anything completely bad, but I feel like bit off more than he could chew. I think that's a more fair way of stating it. And that also seems to be the case with, like, like the other players have also said stuff like that. It's like, oh, when I made my character, you said I couldn't do, like, such and such. But now you have, like, a DMPC who has such and such. It's like, oh, well, I didn't know about, I didn't know how such and such worked uh, back when we started this campaign. It's like, okay, well, can I, you know, get such and such now? Oh, well, your character's, like, too far along to go for such and such, like, I don't know, what is it, like a prestige class or a multi-class? So I'm like, they could do it once they level up. <laughs> but the DM is still saying no, and it, but also still allowing it. And, and the whole thing of, like, not making sure that the new players who join have characters that are going to merge well with the rest of the party. I feel like that's really important. Like, there's a barrier between letting the players do whatever they want and making sure the, like, the player characters, the players and their characters can get along well. Yeah. And, like, I told you about the whole undead thing. <laughs> yeah. That had happened. But yeah. I, I had originally written a bit of a backstory for my character. Explained that, like, was taken by minotaurs and, like, fought them off. And then that group of minotaurs, like, attacked the village. And that's how the sword met the elf. And the two started on adventures and stuff. And so the DM decided, oh, minotaur. It's like, I decided on minotaurs because the DM had said that, like, minotaurs were, like, a classic, like, problem, a threat that would just appear. So I'm like, okay, sure. Minotaurs, whatever. I think originally I... I had ogres originally, and the DM had me change it to minotaurs, because, like, well, there's no, well, ogres are actually friendly, but minotaurs are bad. So, like, okay, fine, minotaurs, because he say so. Oh, well, since you said minotaurs so much, I'm going to give your character, like, I'm going to have your character use one of their feats to have bane against minotaurs. Like, the actual feat would be, like, would be bane against uh, monstrous humanoids, not just one specific one. Yeah, bane against minotaurs. You do extra damage specifically to minotaurs. Like, I should be able to deal extra damage to all the monstrous humanoids instead of just narrow, you know, just pinholing right into minotaurs instead. Like, you're the one who said minotaur. <laughs> And even though my character can, like, float and move about on its own, the DM still gave me infinite use of telekinesis to help move it around. But it wasn't, it wasn't anything like, oh yeah, you can just have, you know, telekinesis just for either moving yourself or moving something else. Just the basic movement of it. It's like, no, it's like an infinite use item of telekinesis at will. So, of course, I had to... um. I tested the waters, <laughs> and then I broke it. Um, telekinesis isn't exactly a spell that sees a ton of use in D&D, or like, hasn't seen a ton of use in D&D games that I've been a part of. 
because it's a fifth level spell and it lasts for I think just a few minutes <laughs> like you might as well just use mage hand or like greater mage hand which I was going to try to get like a infinite use like greater mage hand but DM gave me telekinesis instead um one of the abilities of telekinesis is violent thrust basically use up the rest of the telekinesis spell to shoot an object i think it was it's 25 feet per caster level and it's 25 pounds worth of objects per caster level i'm level nine and i think it, i think it's based off my caster level even if it isn't i Telekinesis is generally a 5th level spell anyway. <laughs> so it would be cast to level 9. Um, oh, but also, so I've used it a few times just for the sword, just to launch at an enemy faster than I could get there on my own with my 20 foot float speed. But telekinesis doesn't say one item, it says items equal to your caster level. So we were fighting against a few chimeras... And I was just like, hey, there's like rocks and stones and stuff around here, right? Okay, cool. I'd like to launch the sword and also eight decently sized boulders at this chimera and attack it nine times at once. And then on the next turn, I would like to do the same thing. <clears throat> just each turn. Just absolutely launch it. And, yeah, that really flummoxed the DM for quite a bit. They were not... <laughs> they give me this ability, and they saw... They were fine with me using the violent thrust part of it until they realized that I could do a whole lot of damage in one turn with it. Oh, what's up? Huh? Did you start watching the stream, or did you stop watching it? No, I started watching the stream and it was very loud. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm just doing a whole bunch of forging in this episode. A whole Nothing bunch of particular. failure, yes. Well, it's not really failure. I'm getting forging XP. Just, you know, slowly. <laughs> Every so often I just get some inspiration for something to write again or a new way to see a previous scene I'd thought of and I should really just take those bits of inspiration and just start writing. Writing an entire book, one scene at a time, and eventually just taping all of the sections together. <laughs> Almost suspect that's what I should do when I'm doing my uh, Magic the Gathering games when other people are taking too long on their turns. I just start writing a book. <laughs> what level? Of, yeah, what level of rudeness is uh, writing a book? Because I know that, like, reading a book is when, you know, when someone's trying to do stuff with you, like, is pretty rude. <laughs> Although magic players t can take a heckin' long time with their turns to do ultimately not much. Back when, um... Back when the Animal Crossing for the Switch was relatively new, during that first month, <laughs> I, uh, every morning, I, I had a whole different desk, like a sit-down desk for my computer at the time. So I, I think this was before I had an actual, like, desktop. I had the tablet. And I had all set up, whatever, for playing Commander. It was interesting whatever so i'd go and play a game of commander and i'll just play animal crossing and do all of my daily stuff 
I play maybe one or two games of Commander, do all my Animal Crossing dailies, then I'd go on with my day. Like, it worked well enough. Just a simple game or two, and yeah, I'd just have all of my dailies done. Easy. Sometimes I wonder if I should join, like, a new D&D campaign. I tried to join in... Someone's on this server. Loki's, Ellie's... I tried to join in on some... I think it was Loki's game. It's been a while, I can't quite remember. But then I don't think that they've had another session since then. <laughs> so I tried to join in with them, but they didn't have any sessions. So I never actually joined. I mean, one of my big problems with joining in with the D&D &D games is I get bored too easily. I don't want to be like, oh, hey, look, I'm a, you know, I'm a human fighter. I took a giant... Two, I took, you know, the two-handed spike chain weapon, and I have power attack and greater cleave, and, you know, just like all the other 12,000 human fighters. Like, I'd love to play, it's like, oh yeah, you know, human fighter, but I use, like, a double-ended sword. Like, that would be pretty cool. It's completely terrible and horrible of a weapon. Like, don't waste a feat for the flipping two, like, double-bladed sword. That thing is terrible. Honestly, you're better off just using one sword. Or if you really need two weapons, use two swords. It's, like, strictly worse than just using, like, two long swords. <laughs> or two short swords, whatever. <laughs> but it's cool. <laughs> So I want to use it. I had a character once and I would found some uh, homebrew thing for having like a hook shot. And I wanted to have that with my character. It's like, yeah, it's like basically like a crossbow. I think does a little bit less damage than a crossbow. And then instead of like reloading it, you have to spend like an action like rewinding it like back in. But then you don't have to like worry about ammo. And, like, climbing up walls and stuff is a lot easier because it's, you know, like a grappling hook. And like, yeah, that was fun. That was pretty cool. It, the visuals of a character just firing a grappling hook at enemies. <laughs> yeah, strictly worse than just using a crossbow and having a grappling hook in the bag. But it was cool and neat. But... It seems like with D&D players, if there's a strictly better option, then you are a brain-dead moron for not going with the strictly better option. <laughs> People have yelled at me for being uh, not perfectly optimized for D&D, &D, and it's like, yeah, I don't care about... It's like, give me enough... Uh, yeah, give me enough uh, source books and a high enough uh, starting level... I can make a character who's, like, just indestructible. I can make a character who can't take damage. Would that be more fun? <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I could just start bribe the DM into, it's like, hey, you all, you find, all find yourselves in a tavern, and you win D&D. &D. Congratulations, the game is over. <laughs> you have won. Let's leave. <laughs> Let's start a new session in a few weeks with new characters. But of course, there are some players who obviously, like, they do just want, they do just seem to only want to win D&D, &D, whatever that might entail. And it's like, oh, yes, I have my character who can, you know, move four times around and attack 27 times. It's like, my character is a tiefling with a skateboard and, like, a guitar.
Yeah, I'm bored. <laughs> Ow. Here, ow. Well, so yeah, finishing off, like, the final enemy of an encounter while also, like, while also falling into a, a like, crowd surf at the same time. <laughs> like, you know, like I said, playing as a magic talking sword. Every day I'm slightly closer to actually finally writing a flipping story that's like a D&D &D campaign, but every member of the group, or basically every member of the group, is some different form of, like, intelligent magic item. Maybe one character is a bracelet, one character is a weapon, one character is, like, some sort of an armor. I want one character to be a pair of boots. One character is both boots. <laughs> because I think that's funny. <laughs> and the boots have different stats. <laughs> yeah, in fact, have them be the two, the two boots be one each of, like, the special boots in Ocarina of Time. <laughs> one is the hover boots, and the other is an iron boot. Now that's funny, but no, it's like it's one pair of boots. But oh god, I still remember playing Ocarina of Time as a kid, and once I got the uh, bunny slippers, I just never took them off unless I needed to take them off for like a puzzle or whatever. So my character would just always be sliding around. I don't know why I just remembered this, but I remembered a drama exercise that I did back in high school. Uh, the teacher asked everyone in class, like, okay, if you could be, if you were to, if you were to be stranded on a, like, deserted island, but you could bring one item with you, real, fictional, doesn't matter, what would that item be? Mm hmm. So, me, trying to think outside the box, like, oh yeah, I'd have, like, we can have fictional items. I'd have the Ocarina of Time. And then the teacher's like, okay, all of you with the items, uh, you four, act out a scene where you're on a deserted item, you, just deserted island, you have those items with you. Go. So I'm just there, like, uh... <laughs> And, just, and I just kind of like scuttle away. It's like, yeah, no, just teleport back home. <laughs> just, okay, just teleport away. I go back home. No longer on the island. Solved. The rest of them? <laughs> yeah, the rest of them? Too bad. They have to deal with it themselves. I am out. <laughs> And there's, you know, well, like 16, 17 year old me trying to explain to the teacher. I was like, yeah, no, I, I teleport away. I, I teleport back home. You said it could be a fictional item. This is what that fictional item does. I just teleport home. <laughs> like...
Ah, pa pa pa. So I guess if we, if I was to write such a story, so the, the idea for the story was, you know, a group of intelligent magic items all being entrusted to a person who really would not be able to defend themselves in the wild. And their job is to make sure that this person can make it to their goal safely. Like some young princess wants to be an adventurer. <laughs> and cannot be persuaded away from it. So the royal advisor, whatever, gives them a bunch of powerful magic items so they can be a proper adventurer. Okay, so the whole game is one big escort mission. Yeah, well, this wouldn't be a game. This would be just a story of to write. Oh, okay. If we're doing this as a game, it would probably just be like either some random NPC we found or just all of us working like together I, without all being put on one person. <laughs> Whatever, however it winds up happening over the course of the game. But for the sake of a story, yes, one big escort mission. Now that I'm thinking about it, I have a few. I have a few more ideas. Could work towards for that. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, would it be worth the writing? Would anyone actually want to read it? I mean, I don't think that part particularly matters. Would it be fun to write? And maybe. The value of a good laugh is underappreciated these days. I don't know if I ever told you about this, but I have a general rule of thumb uh, during character creation of video games. If it makes me laugh, I should probably just have it be part of the character. <laughs> If I'm going through the character customization options and one of them really makes me laugh, that will be a good idea to go with whatever that is. And that's why for one particular video game, the main character has a big old Professor Port mustache. <laughs> Other than the mustache, the character basically looks like Neapolitan. But imagine Neapolitan with like Professor Port's mustache. The game tries to take itself seriously, but it's it's the the game itself allowed me to have that mustache as an option. It's its own fault for including it, really. Oh my gosh, all of this for maybe, what, 10 levels of forging? Do I have any more apples? No. Is there anything more in the fridge I can start using? Weird. Anyway.
Anything on your mind you want to chat about for the next 10 to 15-ish minutes while I get the yeah. rest of this? Not really. I'm thinking I might go grab some food. And by grab some food, I mean from the fridge. So, I'm hungry. That's probably a good idea. Fridge food is good food. Yes. I've been eating some food all this time. Well, then how can you say fridge food is good food? You don't have fridge food, you have your food. I mean, this food did come out of my fridge. Yeah, but it hasn't been in the fridge for a long time, so it's no longer fridge food. I mean, I think the fridge would want to eat it. It's... No, it would be just, like, kind of the funniest thing ever. If I write a story just for the sake of a good laugh, and somehow it winds up becoming, like, a show. <laughs> if I write this story of a group of, you know, group of magical items trying to protect a princess or whatever, And the story gets, like, you know, <laughs> picked up by people, absolutely love it, and somehow it just turns into, like, an animated show or something. <laughs> Despite the um, fascination that we have with isekais, I don't think that this would necessarily be <laughs> an isekai. What's wrong with Isekai? Mm, doesn't work with the plot I have in my head. I, I mean, I'm sure it would. We just need to give you a good shake to mix things up. What, like a snow globe? Uh, sure. I guess in the next episode I should buy a lot more than just 99 apples. I want to get crafting and chemistry up to level 99 as well. Got to work whatever I can in order to get those nice juicy stats. Why is it 44 now? It was 40 earlier. I still don't understand the, uh, Mentality behind that one guy, though, just like, 
Oh, hey, no, I have some questions about this, but instead of just asking them, I'd really rather just talk, to, like, message you directly about them. I want my questions to be secret, secret. I don't want others to know what my questions are. And it's like, weird vibes, yo. <laughs> but sure, fine, I'll humor you. You can mess with me about that. It's like, okay, are you sure? It's like, like, would you be okay if we had lesbians? It's like, that's, I have four tags on this thing, and that's one of them. Like, like, did you not pay attention to the post that you're looking at? Or is it a common thing for people to have, you know, F slash F tag and not actually want the two female characters to be in a relationship? Like, what is, like, the mentality behind asking that? Although, to be fair, on this very same server, I did message someone who had an F, like, F slash F tag who actually didn't want, uh, us to play two female characters and was surprised when I had offered that as a proposal for a scene because uh, they didn't even realize that apparently that they had had that tag. It was up by accident. And they meant to not have that at all. But it's like... Again, I really don't think that I should be taking any of the blame for any of this stuff. Doesn't seem like my fault that they didn't have their stuff tagged properly. Strawberry jam. I have an important question for you. Whatever cooking implement that was that had toast as the only recipe, please tell me that wasn't literally a toaster. <laughs> Why? Because that would be really, really dumb of the game to implement a thing that can only make one recipe. <laughs> no, it, it, it's an oven. Do you know why it's called an oven? Why? Because you oven the cold food and oven out hot eat the food. What? <laughs> a weird, really weird edit someone made to a Garfield comic. Mm. I think like years ago. Why is it called an oven when you of in the cold food and of out hot eat the food? I don't know the origins of it, but it's stupid. <laughs> it's like the uh has ever has anyone ever gone so far as to look even at and as to do more like? What? Okay, wait. I I want to get the proper quote. Has anyone really been far even as decided to use even go on to do look more like? None of those words make any sense together in that order. <laughs> it was a post in a, apparently a 4chan board about a video game. <laughs> and the people on the forum spent quite a while trying to decipher it. The best uh, explanation is that they were actually asking like three sentences at once and just kind of rammed them all together. I mean, it seems likely to me that they were... English is not their first language, and they were doing a literal translation, like word by word. 
of something. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Oh gosh! Oh wait. Uh, what? Has anyone really been far even as society use even go want to do look more like? You've got to be kidding me! I've been further even more decided to use even go need to do look more than. <laughs> As anyone can. Can you really be far even as decided half as much to use go wish for that? My guess is that when one really been far even as decided once to use even go want, it is then that he has really been far even as decided to use even go want to do look more like. It's just common sense. I can memorize a lot of weird sentences. I'm, I'm not going to even try to memorize that one. Oh, what? I need to do an eat. <laughs> oh, just, you know, comedy from 15 years ago. Actually, while I was looking that stuff up, found, I have a message about a thing. Oh, yeah. Some people, when uh, advertising for searching for role plays, they introduce like writing samples and stuff, which is just, oh, that's a really great introduction to a novel. I can definitely see that as a good opening uh, post. Really sets the scene. Okay, but what do you do, you know, 10 posts down after you've started to establish a rhythm? Or do you just never establish a rhythm because all of your posts are going to be like this? Like, I don't save, like, the role plays I do. I just let them, you know, kind of wither away on their own websites and stuff. And wow. everybody that I write with has a very slightly different um, set of wants for what they want to see, like, in writing. Some characters... Some characters just care that your character picks up a thing. Some, char some people just care that they know that your character picked up a thing. Some people want to know, like, which hand your character picked the thing up with because they care about, like, handedness and whatnot. And it's like, oh, is it in, like, the left hand or the right hand? Do they Are they holding two items in one hand or are they holding one item in each hand? Sort of thing. And some people just assume that your character picks up the stuff and they don't actually care about actually writing in that they picked up the apple uh, when you're saying that they're eating the apple, it's implied that they picked it up. <laughs> so, of course, if you put in the writing sample that's not the kind that the person wants, they just go, oh, well, it looks like we're not compatible because you gave, gave, cause you gave me the wrong one. <laughs> it's like, and they don't want to say, oh, I'm the sort of person who cares that your character picked up an apple with their left hand because... Like, I know that the character is right-handed, so they're picking up with their less dominant hand so they can use their dominant hand in case they need need to use it for writing or, say, a weapon or, you know, otherwise doing something else with the dominant hand. <laughs> because I care about those sorts of features in my, you know, make-believe story writing event. But like, some people do. Some people don't.
Like, it's not a case where, like, one of those is right and one of those is wrong. They're just both different. <laughs> Anyway, this has been a forging level, a forging episode of runes. Tune in next time for it. Probably not so much more forging, but I'm sure we'll figure out something to do to uh, waste another hour. Yeah, today, today we did forging. Next time we'll do counterfeiting. I thought you were going to say today we did forging, tomorrow oh, we, we'll do the RV. Like, today we forged. Next episode be a re. Forge a re. Ah. So anyway.